I have behind me is a 1989 BMW 325i that I picked up for $1,800. I've owned this thing for about a day and I can already tell I overpaid for it. This thing is kind of a piece of junk, but it looks really cool. I've kind of been in the market for a rear wheel drive sedan with a manual transmission that has that sort of 80s, early 90s vibe. Searching around on Craigslist, looking for a car that might fit that description, and then this E30 popped up. Well, the truth is, this car has so many issues with it that really I should have been paid to take it away. After one night of it sitting in the garage, it leaked about every fluid it has in it out onto the garage floor. So needless to say, there's gonna be a lot of work ahead on this one. But it was a one owner car. It had the manual transmission, it was a sedan, it was black on black, something I was really looking for. And I figured, you know what? It drives all right, runs all right. Yeah, I can take a gamble on this old thing. It has a ton of miles, so many miles. In fact, the odometer stopped at 234,000 miles and the owner said, it's got more than that. So I can only imagine this thing's getting close to 270-ish thousand miles. But you live and learn, and I was kind of looking for a project anyways. So I'm gonna go through the little issues and bigger issues that this car has within it. At least the stuff that I found so far. I'm sure once I start working on it, I'm gonna find even more problems. So let's take a look. <sighs> These tie rod ends are gone. Woo. Just take a look at these things. That is a very worn out tie rod end. Also see that we have torn boots here on the steering rack. Both sides are torn, just like both tie rod ends are loose. We've got a mixture of oil leaking and coolant leaking. Let's see that. See that. Okay, so just static parked, we've got coolant leaking, what looks like all the way up there from the water pump. Then we've got some, you know, some red fluid dripping from here. I topped off the power steering reservoir because I noticed it was out and it, of course it's just all leaking back out into this long strip of oil right there. So I believe that's from the power steering reservoir. Um, this car runs a timing belt and all of this contamination, I mean, oil coming down from up there, coolant coming from down there, probably means that that timing belt needs to be changed out as well. Now I noticed on the dashboard, the brake lining light is on and looking around here, I noticed these wires are cut. I believe these are actually the brake pad sensor wires. Basically these shouldn't be cut though. I, I know that much. That's a lot of fluid coming off of that. Okay, looking on to the engine bay, we can see this is our power steering reservoir here. You can see all kinds of gunk is around here. This was completely empty when I got the car. And it's got some in there, but it's basically all leaking out as fast as it can. Uh, the coolant level light is on on the dashboard. My guess is it is this switch since I've raised the coolant level up so that the switch should be catching it, but it isn't. If we look over here, we've got this intake boot. It's just a rubber boot, and we've got various cracking going on here on this. I think this is an idle control valve or something like that. It's electronic. Then we've got some just age cracking throughout the boot. I have to replace that, even if it isn't currently causing issues. The only thing not leaking is the brake system, believe it or not, so that is good. We see you have some residue from the coolant system. Not a big deal, but water pump is down in there. I can see the water pump actively leaking when the car is on. Now the previous owner told me that the timing belt had recently been replaced, but this is the only sticker I can find related to the timing belt. And the mileage says 234,000 and the date is, well, it's completely illegible. Timing belts on these are supposed to be changed about every 60,000 miles or every four years. And that's kind of the general guideline anyway. Well, the odometer doesn't work on this car and it's stuck at 234,000. So it genuinely could have been 10 years ago when this timing belt was last changed. I don't know. I don't know that I can take the seller's word that it was just recently changed. So I'm going to go ahead and do it anyways. Okay, back underside the car here. There's a huge oil leak coming from the bell housing where the transmission meets the engine. Of course, that indicates a rear main seal on the engine leaking. And then we've got 
some heavy leakage out the output shaft on the transmission. So we've got an output shaft seal that needs replaced. It also probably means the input shaft seal on the transmission needs replaced as well. There's no indication that the clutch has ever been changed out on this car, so we're gonna have to replace the clutch, which means when we get the transmission out, we're gonna change all the seals that are leaking anyways. So it's a big job that lies ahead, but you know what? It'll future-proof the car for a little bit longer. Starting at the back side of the car, you can see that the exhaust system has been modified by Mother Nature's tuning service. Pretty jankity here. <sighs> okay, but the good news is it's only rotten here at the tailpipe section. Catalytic converters and all that are still in good shape. So it's just a matter of buying a new piece and getting rid of this piece of trash. Unfortunately, when I was buying it, I didn't realize that CV boots were torn on the axles here. I don't think I'm gonna even mess with trying to fix those CV boots. I'm just gonna buy a whole new axle assembly for both sides. Both sides are completely torn. The emergency brake does not work on this car and looking at it closer, it's a little bit rusted out. You can see this. Although that's not the reason it's not working. Let me show you that in a little bit. You can see that the differential here is obviously leaking. So we'll have to put some new seals on that. Yeah, as you can see, the CV boot is also torn. Doesn't look great. Surprised this hasn't failed <laughs> looking like that. As you can see, this car has been lowered on some sort of lowering spring made by Bavarian Auto Sport. I'm not a big fan of super lowered cars, but this car looks all right with it. I'm gonna leave it be for right now because I've got to spend funds in lots of other areas that need attention, and that doesn't need attention right now. Here's something that's not critical, but it's super annoying. It's the door brake on the driver's door. Oh man, that just sounds terrible. Wonder if maybe just lubricating that hinge in there will do the trick, but right now, oof. Okay, I was talking about how the emergency brake doesn't work. Well, just check this out. And after digging around at the back side of the car, thinking maybe the shoes were misadjusted, I found out ultimately that that wasn't the case at all. If you pull up this little bellows here, you can actually see the cables and well, this cable's not attached to anything. <laughs> so, needless to say, I've got to fix, I think both cables are actually broken. So both cables, one going to each side of the rear, and hopefully with replacing that, the emergency brake will work once again. Something that should be expected basically for an old 80s BMW or all the door handles are in various states of disrepair. These pieces are cheap to replace and definitely worth replacing because this, bezel's miss missing and the actual handle is broken. Fixing that will really help the interior look a lot better. Unfortunately, very little works when it comes to the gauge cluster on this car. So when we turn the accessories on, we'll see that the fuel gauge comes alive and all of the lights light up down here. At least I assume that's all of the lights. But then let's go ahead and start the car. Well, that's right. It starts up just fine, but there's no tachometer. And after having driven the car, I know that there's no speedometer either. The odometer doesn't count. The temperature gauge actually does work, but the miles per gallon doesn't work. So I'm hoping that there's something behind here that, that's easy to fix. I do know that there are two batteries behind here that control kind of the electronics within this. So I'm hoping that a simple fix, such as replacing those batteries, will make all of this come alive again. Here's another thing on the dashboard. You'll see that this six button little onboard computer, it's really kind of a silly thing nowadays. You'll see that there's a little bit of something happening behind here, but obviously this screen has seen better days. I'm not sure there's actually a fix to replace this LCD. I might just have to buy a whole new one. And by new one, I mean a used one off of eBay. Those run about a hundred bucks. So I'm kind of on the fence on what to do with that one. Another interesting thing here is the blower motor on this car. Well, maybe the lack of the blower motor. Let's listen to this. Yeah, that doesn't sound so good, does it? Well, the owner told me that one of the cages had broken and he'd gone in there, vacuumed out all the debris from that broken cage, but didn't actually fix it. So I'm gonna have to go ahead and replace the blower motor itself. Another thing here, the fog light switch doesn't, eh, doesn't, re doesn't bounce back, doesn't work. I don't think the fog lights work at all. So eventually I'll get to that, but I think I'm gonna focus on the main mechanical things before I look at that sort of more of a cosmetic type issue.
there we have it. Quite a lot of repairs stacking up. This is kind of a deeper project than I've got into for a long time. But I'm hoping that I can pull it off for not too much money. I'm sure it's going to take a lot of time to get this thing running right, looking right, but I think it'll be worth it in the end. It'll be a fun car to drive around. So, fingers crossed and wish me luck that this car can be turned around. We'll see you guys soon. This has been parked here for like five minutes and it's already leaked. Oh, it's actively leaking coolant onto the ground.